Another exciting night of historic racing action awaits at Manchester's National Speedway Stadium as the Swin and Robins swoop into town. This week's meeting brought to us by the Bellevue Aces 2020 team sponsor, Bike Right UK. Well, good evening, everybody. It's Thursday night, and tonight we've got Charity Shield action for you from the early 2018 season. This evening's meeting brought to us courtesy of the Bellevue Aces 2020 team sponsor, Bike Ride UK, the flagship brand of our principal partner, James Briggs Limited. Be sure to give them a follow and a like on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Just search for Bike Ride UK for some top products for your motorcycle and your pedal bike. So it's the first meeting at the National Speedway Stadium in 2018 and this is leg number one of two of the brand new Premiership Charity Shield. Who's going to come out on top, the Aces or the Robins? Well, we're about to find out as I hand over now to the boys for heat number one. Enjoy the meeting. So a chilly mid-March evening here in Manchester for the first leg of the Charity Shield, the Bellevue Aces against the Swindon Robins, Knockout Cup winners Bellevue, League Champions Swindon and both tracking fairly similar sides this season as well, both have made two changes and they had some uh, big dust-ups last season as well Heat 1 is uh, on the way with Craig Cook riding in road going off the outside gate because Nick Morris, the Swindon captain, won the toss. He took gates 1 and 3 for Heat 1 and he goes in white. The new Bellevue captain is Steve Worrell. He's in blue off gate 2 and it's Adam Ellis in yellow and black for Swindon off the inside gate. All four of these were with their respective teams last season and uh, Ellis has uh, had some uh, good nights round here, was very much key in their mid-season victory here. That was part of the, uh, the fantastic run that Swindon got on in the middle of the campaign that propelled them up the table and uh, eventually to the top ahead of the uh, playoffs. Of course, Bellevue did gain some revenge in the knockout cup by knocking Swindon out in the semi-finals on the way to winning that competition. And they now lock horns for the first time this season here tonight. Second leg at the Abbey Stadium is on Thursday. Stuart Wilson is the referee. Ellis on the inside. Worrell, gate two. Morris, gate three. Cook off the outside. Away they go. It's a great start by Worrell. Gate two. Morris against the boys to shove and it's Steve Hall here with the advantage over Nick Morris Craig Cook in third place Ellis at the back real strong first bend there by Steve Worrell Ellis in trouble up on bench three and four lost ground and Steve Worrell the Bellevue captain who makes here for Nick Morris Craig Cook in third Ellis at the back it was tight there on the first turn Worrell just got in front of Morris from gates two and three Morris tried to go round him but Worrell gave him a shove and race leads clear on to his third lap now with Worrell out in front of Looks like it should be a 4-2 open here to the aces. The track riding pretty well. They did plenty of work in the build-up because certainly turns one and two were still very wet round the outside. But uh, Steve Worrell having no trouble at all as he leads on to his last lap. Being trapped away by the Swindon man and Nick Morris in second place. Cook in third and Ellis who lost ground on the first lap is at the back. So it should be a, a race uh, winning and heat winning advantage here for Bellevue in the opener. It's the captain Steve Worrell who wins it. Second place is Nick Morris. Craig Cook in third and Adam Ellis out the back and a real strong first bend there by Steve Worrell got up to just between the two Swindon boys just got his wheel in front into bend one gave Nick Morris a shove Morris was sent wide and maintained second place over Craig Cook who offended off the challenge of Adam Ellis for that third place well 4-2 to Bellevue in the opening race Steve Worrell with the win second place to Nick Morris and in third place Craig Cook On we go to Heat 2 with Jai Etheridge, the new Bellevue Reserve, riding in red, riding in white off gate 2 is Zach Weichsnake back from long-term injury for the Robins and going in white there off gate 2. Gate 3 in blue is uh, Dan Bury, the reigning National League Riders champion, a big year ahead for him in the Championship and the Premiership of course. And Mitchell Davy, a new face for Swindon in yellow and black off the outside, made some guest appearances towards the end of uh, last season and a team which has a strong top 5. Uh, pressure on their reserves to deliver as well. Etheridge led off the inside. Zach Weichner gate two, Bewley gate three, and Davy off the outside. Green light on them for heat number two, and away they go. Tiny start there by Etheridge off the inside of Bewley. A couple of 
across from gate three as well and the great start there by the home reserves with uh, Mitchell Davy in third place trying to come through on the inside of Etheridge Vicex is out the back but a tremendous start there Bewley explosive from gate number three and on the inside Etheridge was there too and Johnny Etheridge holds that second place here over Mitchell Davy Vicex went really square on turns one and two and he's uh, somewhere drifting out out the back and the powerful Bellevue reserve Dan Bewley is racing well clear in this race number two and he's being trapped on the way by Joy Etheridge in second place he's being uh, put under pressure by Mitchell Davey who's giving it a real go Davey has gone well here in the National League in uh, years gone by and Davey going for a burst right on the outside on turn three and four can he cut back now off the Ben Forsley start the last half Bewley in the final two at the front Etheridge in second place still maintains that spot for now third Mitchell Davey trying to put the pressure on but can Etheridge hold on on turn three and four it's going to be a clear win for Dan Bewley and second place for Jai Etheridge Mark Hughes Davey with a 5-1 there for the aces a big one for Bellevue in heat two it's a 5-1 from Dan Bewley and Jai Etheridge and a really encouraging start there for Etheridge in particular off the inside we know what Bewley can do of course especially around here he looked razor sharp Dan Bewley Jai Etheridge off the inside held off the challenge of Mitchell Davey and Bellevue get a big 5-1 in race number two Bewley and Etheridge with Davey in third place and it's the aces nine the Robins three So a flying start for the meeting for the Aces. 9-3 in front. On we go to Heat 3. And Damien Drodz rides in red. The new Polish signing for the Aces. Uh, very highly thought of in Roslav. And making the move to British Speedway for the first time in his career. He goes off the outside here in this Heat 3. His partner is Rowan Tonga. Such a successful mid-season signing for Bellevue last year. And also a former Swindon man too. For the Robins in white off the inside is Troy Batchelor back with... Uh, back with Swindon after a couple of years away or maybe I should say a year and a half away at uh, Kings Lynn because of course he didn't see out last year with the Stars after all the uh, shenanigans surrounding the uh the Kings Lynn v Paul fixture in the weeks thereafter but actually back in the UK with Swindon where he's been uh, most regularly associated in the last uh, five or six years and his uh, teammate is David Belego who goes off gate three in yellow and black his second season with the Robins and a big success story in 2017 when he made the step up to the top league for the first time and was a tremendous force especially around the Abbey Stadium certainly playing his part in their title victory got a bit of an issue here with the tapes at the moment um, which is the last thing you want on a on a cold opening night of the season but thankfully it's dry after all the snow of the weekend and this track had plenty of snow on it um, even as um, early in, in places as, as this morning um, but they've uh, done work to clear especially bends one and two and the outside of uh, Benz 1 and 2 was causing some concern uh, early this afternoon when the sun really didn't get onto it to, to, uh, to dry it out. But they've uh, put plenty of uh, fresh material down and there have been no concerns over there in the opening couple of heats tonight. So, heat number three, Bachelor off the inside. Tungate, gate two, Belago gate three, and Drugs goes off the outside. Green light is on, perfect start, and away they go, that's a really fast one over Bachelor has gone with him and Swindon here off to a flying start in race three. Troy Batchelor has the advantage over his teammate David Belego and they've got uh, plenty of uh, gap between them and the third place man Damien Drodds for the aces with the Tungate and the back of Tungate already. This does look like a very strong mid-order combination for Swindon with uh, Bachelor and uh, Belago, both fast starters and uh, both starting the other way around this circuit. Drods trying challenging hard in third place, only putting pressure here on Belago. Tongue is uh, taking a couple of stops at the back, but can Drods get in here against the uh, Robins pairing? They're not really team riding. Bachelor is out in front, Belago in second. Drods is tracking in third, not managed to land a challenging blow so far. So could the Robins hit back here in heat three as Troy Bachelor wins? He had some great meetings around here last season. Troy Batchelor guesting for and against and racing for his regular team too. And Swindon are sent to hit back here in the third race. Really fast start by Batchelor. Belago went with him and the Robins take five out of heat number three with Troy Batchelor and David Belago over Damien Drudge. Trouble for Rowan Tungate, of course, that always is likely to happen on the opening night. There could be all manner of gremlins in the works and Rowan Tungate walking back to the pitch. But the Robins boys celebrate that 5-1, their first one of the season and they hit back after the 5-1 concession in heat number two. Troy Batchelor and David Belogo take maximum points over Damien Drodge, Tungate retired and with three heats gone it's now Bellevue 10, Swindon 8.
Gap then back to two points with the riders on track for Heat 4. Max Frick riding in red. A big year ahead, you sense, for Max Frick. Bit injury hit towards the end of last year, but the, we know the talent is there. The red light is on, the red disqualification light's on. What's going on there? Ah, Max Frick has, has contravened one of the new rules this year, which is that you cannot get off the bike to do your gardening. New one, and, and really the riders ought to all be aware of it. And uh, Max Frick has got off the bike to do some gardening, and that will see him disqualified. Stuart Wilson very quick on the bottom there, and uh, you suspect that all the riders uh, would be uh, given the briefing before the season started about a couple of the... There's always one or two... New, uh, new things to catch riders out and of course a couple of years ago we had the rule about not being able to ride on the centre green well this year you cannot get off the bike to garden at the start line you have to do it whilst you're sat on the bike and the referee Stuart Wilson has picked that up straight away and uh, Max Frick has therefore been uh, disqualified from heat number four So Max Frick back on the circuit, going to be going off 15 metres here for the rerun of Heat 4 and uh, quite clearly uh, didn't read the BSPA website this morning because there was a handy uh, handy guide to all this year's new rules and regs uh, posted there this morning and that uh, particular regulation was on there. So he goes off 15 metres, Mitchell Davey off the inside, Dan Dewey, gate 2 to Mike Bujelak goes off gate 3, 15 metres back, Max Frick off the outside, Bujelak should be favourite here, great start by Davey away again here, it's Davey who goes a bit wide off for Ben 2 with uh, right in front of his teammate Tobias Bujelak and now can Max Frick make up ground because it's not perhaps quite the order you'd have expected but Mitchell Davey here has the advantage over Tobias Bujelak and that's the thing Max Frick right back in the play, only one lap gone and Max Frick's already caught up loads of ground, he's got round the outside now into second place, he's got past Bujelak and he's right round the ball trying to get at Mitchell Davey as well, Davey still race leads on to his third lap but Max Frick is Going wide on Benz 1 and 2, back on the inside comes Boucher, that great action here in E4 and Davey still with the advantage, now Frick switching to the inside, Boucher, that kind of go back round and Bewley out the back, but one up to go still, Mitchell Davey here has it over Max Frick, third place is Boucher, that and Mitchell Davey still holds him at bay, Frick trying to go in between as Boucher, that goes back into play, into the last round they go, fantastic race and Frick dives down the inside of, of Davey and Frick, can he hold on or will Davey get back round the outside, Frick comes through and wins it on 15 metres, fantastic ride by Max Frick to get past Mitchell Davey on the final bend. He did try the outside for a couple of laps. He switched back for the inside on the final circuit and Max Frick gets the National Speedway Stadium alive there in heat number four with a last to first dash from 15 metres. He got past Mitchell that quickly enough. Davey was holding a pass but he went for the inside on turns three and four and got to the line in front. Fantastic ride by Max Frick to win heat four. Davey in second place. Third to Mitchell Lack, a three apiece and it's Bellevue 13 Swing and eleven. Change in heat five. Uh, Rowan Tungate clearly having trouble. We saw him stop in heat three, and he has uh, exceeded the two-minute time allowance. So Dan Dewley replacing him. He goes in blue. Damian Drods is in red. It's Adam Ellis in yellow and black for the Robins, and Nick Morris going in white. That's your lineup for. Heat 5 after that epic heat 4, the aces are still two points in front, 13 to 11, it's Drogs off the inside, Lewis gate 2, Bewley coming in off gate 3, and Morris goes off the outside, green light for heat 5 and away, that's a better start on time by Adam Lewis. Bewley has the advantage, it's Lewis in second place, Morris didn't really make the gate, he's back in third with the Drogs at the back, well Tongue Gate's offering trouble before the race, but uh, no trouble at all for Bewley from the start line, we saw him win heat 2 in a canter, and he's slightly racing away here, Running last in that heat four, Bewley has the advantage. Morris now moves through into second place. Ellis in third with Drods out the back, but certainly when you've got a reserve who you can bring in when someone hits trouble and he can storm away like this from an international one by Nick Morris. And he's really got a good thing. Dan Bewley is certainly that. Drods is challenging hard trying to get a passing move done there on Adam Ellis. Ellis maintains the third place for now. Bewley is racing well clear here. Drods going wide off the fourth. Ben, that ball, 
This was Bewley over Morris with Ellis in third and the gap that Bewley can stretch in front when he gets himself in front and can really stretch his legs really is quite something to see. Dan Bewley winning heat five for Bellevue. Second place to Nick Morris and third Adam Ellis with Damien Drods out the back. But a real pocket rocket reserve weapon, Dan Bewley, his second season in the Premiership. We saw the signs throughout last year and all the signs are we'll be seeing a lot more from him in 2018. Dan Bewley coming in for Rowan Tongate and rubbing in a big race victory there for the aces. The Robins back second and third with Nick Morris and Adam Ellis. And the gap is still two points, five heats gone. It's Bellevue 16, Swindon 14. On we go to heat six with uh, Craig Cook riding in red, Steve Worrell in blue. It's Tobias Mujlak going in white, and Zach Weichnecht goes in yellow and black. This is certainly a strong combination for the Aces. There was a lot of debate about how they would uh, set the team up this season. And of course, you can change from meeting to meeting, but certainly Cook and, uh, and Worrell is very strong in one and two. Of course, what you gain there, you may lose lower down. You can, you have to put the number one by average at number one, but then two to five can ride in any order. And um, it was a feeling certainly on Swindon's side that uh, maybe Bachelor would ride at five, and in fact he's coming in at three. And for the Aces, uh, Steve Worrell's actually the uh, third highest average rider in the team, but riding at number two. So we'll see him in heat six, eight, and ten. Heat six with uh, Mujelak in white off the inside. Cook in red off gate two. Weichnacht in yellow and black off gate three. And Worrell goes in blue off the outside. Green lights on then from referee Stuart Wilson. Away they go. Better start that time by Mujelak. And Cook uh, gets squeezed out in between. Worrell tries to go around the outside. Mujelak briefly has the advantage, but Worrell's gone round him. And Cook's going inside him. They've got either side there. And Mujelak tries to hit back on Ben three and four. But Craig Cook strongly comes through on the inside. Well, the pole made the start there. Both boys went either side. And Steve Worrell race leads here over Craig Cook with Mujelak in third place and Mike Snacks out the back. It's certainly a powerful one two pairing here for the ACs. They'll be trying to make fast starts to meetings with Heat 1 5 1. They didn't quite get that here. Looking set for a 5-1 in heat six with Steve Worrell, the winner in his first race, and looking uh, set to do exactly the same here in heat six. Craig Cook, Grand Prix man this year, of course, in second place. But Jaylak made a fast start. Down the back, Bellevue were uh, pecked back by that 5 1 to Swindon in heat three. Max Frick then had that sensational ride in four, and they're going to extend their lead back up to six points here with maximum points in heat six. Steve Worrell and Craig Cook over to Bias Mujelak and Zach Weichnecht. A 5 1 to Bellevue puts their lead back up to six points, and Mujelak made a good start there, but the Bellevue boys went either side. Worrell around the outside on the back straight into Ben three. Craig Cook taking the inside route through past the pole, and a 5 1 was was the result. Morrill wins 8 6, second place Cook, third Mujelak, and it's now Bellevue 21, Swindon 15. Good line up here for heat seven. We saw the heroics of Max Frick in heat four going on 15 metres. This time he's off the inside gate and I'm sure he'll stay firmly astride the bike here. He provided us with plenty of thrills, but I'm sure he provided to do it from the start here. But he's up against the uh, Swindon combination who gained a 5-1 in heat three. Troy Batchelor going in white and David Bellego going in yellow and black. In between, Joy Etheridge who picked up a good paid win in heat two when he followed uh, Dan Beauty home for maximum points. So an interesting... Uh, Line up here for H7. Of course, the gap is uh, six points, and ordinarily in a league match this year, that would see the return of the uh, tactical substitute rule on, on one occasion if you're six points or more behind, but that's not applicable in two legged ties. So, knockout cup, uh, charity shield, playoffs, or whatever, you cannot do the tactical sub. So, uh, that will not be happening, but it will be in the regular league matches. Why you can't? Answers on the postcard, I don't know, but that's that's the rule. And uh, heat number seven is at the start line. Frick off the inside, Bachelor gate two, Etheridge gate three, and Bellego off the outside. Bellevue, six points in front in this first leg, tie of the Charity Shield, green lights, and away. Looked to be there from Bachelor gate two, but Frick is not the legend front anyway. 
away. It's a good ball by Etheridge. Bellico is going around the outside for, for a third place. I think he'll get in there. In fact, he'll go around his teammates into the third bend. Bachelor rather got uh, stopped in mid-track there on the way to the bend. There's now a threat from uh, Joy Etheridge as they come off the fourth bend. How impressive is Healer? We've seen him do it from the back, and now we're seeing him do it from the gate in H7. And this, uh, you sense, could be a big season for Max Frick. It's very early on, of course, opening night. Lots can happen, we know, but uh, we know also take that final step forward, had a bit of Grand Prix experience last year, didn't really work out, but I'm sure that that will be a target in the very near future. Max Frick leading with uh, Belliger running a comfortable second, Bachelor in third. Bellico's got plenty of pace in second place, not too far behind. Bachelor in third with Etheridge bringing up the rear. So round turns three and four safely. And it's two rides and two wins for Max Frick. Bellico in second, did have plenty of pace. Third, Troy Bachelor. And in the back was Joy Etheridge. Shared heat in race number seven. But how impressive does Max Frick look early in the season? Doing it from 15 metres in fantastic style in heat four. That one much more straightforward, bolted from the inside gate. Bellico kept relatively close as the race went on. Troy Batzer in third, and heat seven is shared, and the gap is maintained at six points. Bellevue 24, Swindon 18. So still a six-point gap, and heat eight, the aces tracking Steve Worrell with two rides and two wins and Dan Beauty with three rides and two wins so this looks strong for them Adam Ellis goes in white and Mitchell Davey who of course so nearly held Max Frick back in heat four he goes in yellow and black both sides uh, Bellevue and Swindon certainly hit by the decision to limit teams to one eight point plus rider from last year so that's cost the aces uh, Kenneth Bierre and it's it forced Swindon into a choice between Nick Morris and Jason Doyle so they eventually released the world champion to join Somerset. Kenneth Bierre out of racing in the UK this year. It does seem a bit peculiar that that rule came in and all it's done is it's, it's actually cost the Premiership um, Kenneth Bierre and Freddie Lindgren and the Premiership has gained Martin Vashelik with Leicester and regained Neil Scritch Neverson with, uh, with King Glynn. So it's not really weakened the league as such. It's not been a, a general weakening move but it's just forced two quality heat leads out of the league. So it, it does seem a little bit peculiar and certainly I'm sure that uh, yeah, it would have been in uh, Bellevue's thoughts for, for this year after the season he had in uh, 17 it would have, they would have had to build the team a different way of course and likewise Swindon if they'd gone with Doyle and Morris and they wouldn't have had the, the likes of Bachelor and Bellego perhaps in the middle order that's the way it's worked out here we go with Heat 8 Beaulieu inside Davey gate 2 Worrell gate 3 Ellis off the outside green lights on for Heat 8 the way they're going Yellow good start by Mitchell Davey the first bend, but crucially for Swindon, um, Davy got the better of Bewley, and Bewley is then blocked off by Davy, allowing Ellis to go around the outside. And that's what uh, Swindon will want from Mitchell Davy this season, no question about that. Made a good start, but it's and what that, what that has done is it's uh, taken Bewley out of the equation. Warren out in front of Eris. Third place is still with Mitchell Davy and uh, Bewley is trying to regain ground now on the Swindon man as they start the third lap. And Bewley is the Eris with a comfortable second here. I don't think he'll catch Steve Worrell from there. They were both part of Team GB last season. Worrell in the, the main team and Ellis is the under-21 reserve in the uh, World Cup. And it's going to be Steve Worrell onto his last lap looking to make it nice. Davey holding a good third with the beauty buzzing around behind him trying to snatch that third place point. There's still plenty of pace here about Dan Bewley into bench three and four for the final time. It's a clear win for Steve Morrell. It's second for Adam Ellis and Davey wrote a really sensible third and fourth bend there to control the line and hold back Dan Bewley who's been a bit all or nothing tonight. Two rides, two wins and two more rides and two last places but no question at all that Steve Worrell is starting the season in terrific style. That's his third win of the meeting and Worrell race wins in heat eight. I think in the context of the meeting, Swindon there will be happy enough to take second and third with Adam Ellis and Mitchell Davey. And Davey, after being 5-1 in heat two, has now picked up a total of four paid five from three rides. But Worrell is the race winner. Bob Watt as he goes past the main grandstand. A three apiece from heat eight, and it's Swindon 27, Bellevue 21.
Zach Weichnecht has now fallen foul of the new regulation. So obviously he wasn't watching when uh, Max Frick did the same in Heat 4. Lots of uh, arms outstretched in the pits, people asking what's going on, but the, the rule is in black and white, and unfortunately Zach Weichnecht has got off the bike, and that means he's going to be disqualified. And people, people will think it's a petty regulation, and no one really knows why it's there, but it is there, and uh, so it's something you can't do. So Zach is disqualified. Uh, I would think that Swindon here may bring in Mitchell Davey. Um, it's a race where they might get something with his fast starting and uh, they may give uh, Zach a ride back elsewhere. So Zach Weichnecht is going on 15 metres. A bit surprised at that, actually. I thought uh, they might uh, switch reserves there and put Mitchell Davey in off the start line. Um, and there's another bike now coming on the circuit as well. So what's, what else is going on here? Um, it looks like someone might be about to, uh, to change bikes at the start line as well. Um, and, I mean, that bike is now being ridden across the centre green and it's, um, it's Damien Droz has got trouble there. So he's going to be... He's going to change. Um, the bike may have not been under power and it went across the centre green. But the point about the, the Weichnick situation there and what we saw with Frick earlier, the rule is there, black and white, as I said, fair enough. But also another rule this year is they've actually cut down on the time between races, five minutes to four minutes, in a bid to speed the meetings up. We've now seen two races delayed because riders have happened to get off their bikes at the start and then gone back to the pits to work out what's going on next. So really it's a bit bizarre. Heat number nine is going to get underway eventually. Tungate's on the inside. Bajilak is off gate two. Drugs is off three. And Bajilak made a five on there from gate two. And uh, the Bellevue boys both uh, skate across the corner a bit there in second and third. Tungate in second. Drugs in third. In fact, Weichstein off the 15 metres has wheeled an enormous ground there on the uh, first lap. And he's trying to make up crowd just as we saw from Max Frick earlier. What a good first lap there by Weichstein. He's trying to get around the outside now of Damien Drogs. In fact, can he get past both? I wonder. Zach Weichstein really on the, on the charge here. Michel that way out in front. It's Tungate second. It's Drogs in third with Weichstein now trying to turn back off men three and four. Drogs has covered him. Finally, but the battle is still on for second, third and fourth. It's all getting tight indeed. Swindon may feel that with Weichstein off the start line here, they may have had more, but Tongue gets in trouble again there. Up on the top turn, sailed out really wide. Drugs goes through, and Weichstein may go through as well. Tongue gets up more mechanical trouble. He has. Weichstein's gone through into third. And can he get Drugs as well, I wonder? It's Michel that way out, missing all the fun and games here. Drugs, I think, will hang on for second place over Weichstein to really put a challenge in. And Swindon do get a 4-2 out of an exciting heat nine. More misery for the Australian champion Rowan Tungate who had a fantastic winter but has had a far from fantastic Monday night here he's failed to finish the race so far more mechanical trouble for Tungate as Mujelak wins it and Swindon so far containing nicely here in Manchester they've got the gap down to four points a win for Tobias Mujelak second place Damien Trotz and Zach Weichner coming back from 15 metres to get third place in a 4-2 it's Bellevue 29 Swindon 25 Up to 8 10 then, and it's Craig Cook and Steve Worrell going for the uh, aces. Worrell still unbeaten, nine points out of nine. And it's Troy Batchelor and David Velago going for the Robins. Bachelor in white, Velago in yellow and black. So let's hope they all stay on their bikes whilst they do their gardening because this looks like uh, quite a uh, good. Uh, Good race in prospect. That uh, regulation is already picking up uh, plenty of uh, comments, adverse ones, I may say, on social media. It does seem a bit like uh, using a sledgehammer to crack a nut. I don't really see the problem in a rider just getting off his bike whilst he's still hanging on to it, particularly if, uh, in the case of the smaller riders, such as uh, Tungate. Um, but if you're within the, within the two minutes and holding on to the bike, um, I don't see any great drama with it. But anyway, that's what the uh, those in charge have decided on and uh, as I say the, uh, the one thing you have to say is that it has been made clear it's there for everyone to read and two riders have uh, fallen foul of it so far tonight. Morrow in blue off the inside, 29-25 in Bellevue's favour. Bellego yellow and black gate two, Cook in red off gate three, Bachelor in white off the outside. Here we go with heat 10, green light and a waste of great start by Steve Morrow. Squeezed out, Bellego Bachelor's going to try a big move around the outside 
Ryan and Balago tries to go inside Craig Cook, who needs to go around his teammate. Now, I'm not sure Warrell knows he's there. It's Warrell and Cook with Batchelor screaming around the outside, and Balago on the inside, still really tight. They go in love to him. Chops across in front of his teammate Bellego, but Craig Cook also closes the gap. And Bellevue have a 5 1 situation here over Troy Batchelor. It's Morrill from Cook, it's Batchelor in third. Bellego out the back, and Batchelor taking it out wide now around 3 4. Not really sure Craig Cook here. Has got round Craig Cook, it's Morrill with the advantage. It's Batchelor in second, it's Cook coming back at Batchelor. The Batchelor has passed him, and now can Bellego put a challenge in on Craig Cook. And Batchelor, meanwhile, is staying on the outside here, looking to ring him. Morrill, but Batchelor now back on the three. One off from Batchelor. Batchelor riding wide. Cook pegging the inside. It's Bellego at the back. It should be a 4 2 in the Bellevue. Batchelor has now moved clear of Cook into bench 3 and 4. Bellego challenging hard round the outside. It's a win for Warrell. It's 12 and a 12 for him. It's second place for Batchelor. And Cook hangs on for third against David Bellego. It looked like a good race on paper. And it certainly was. The Ace is gating on a 5 1 there. Squeezing out Bellego into the first bend. But fair play to Batchelor. Really got stuck in as the race went on and made it round the outside of Craig Cook. I'm not sure from the opening three rides that Craig Cook is completely full of pace here this evening but there's no doubt that Steve Morrell certainly is because he has gone through the card for his first four rides with four out of four, 12 out of 12 Steve Worrell in sensational form at the start of the 2018 season. Worrell wins 8-10 second place Troy Batchelor, third Craig Cook and it's Bellevue 33 Swindon 27 Heat 11, Max Frick riding in red for the Aces. Jai Etheridge going in blue, Nick Morris in white and Adam Ellis in yellow and black. So six points so far from two rides for Max Frick. He goes off gate two, partnered by Jai Etheridge, the uh, second new face in the Bellevue side. It's his third year in the UK. Rides for Berwick in the Championship. Started life at uh, Edinburgh a couple of years ago. And had no success there. Was actually described by the Edinburgh manager John Campbell as possibly the worst signing ever that they've made, and the worst rider has come out of Australia. I think he's he's proved that rather wrong over the last year or so, because certainly since he's gone to, to Berwick particularly in the uh, championship, he's proved himself to be a, a capable rider, and uh, that's earned him the step up. He made a few guest appearances last season for Bellevue and others, and showed some uh, some good form from the gate especially, and that's what's helped him to uh, win his call-up. Of course, the Aces I mentioned earlier lost Kenneth Pierre over the winter. They've also chosen not to track Jack Smith this year in the... Uh, Premiership, people racing in the National League for the, uh, the Colts and the Sheffield in the Championship. Heat 11 then out the start line. Morris inside, Frick gate two, Ellis gate three, Etheridge on the outside of the way. It's a very fast start indeed there by Max Frick. He's in there too though. Morris tries to give him a shot. Morris out of shape there on the second bend. Here comes Etheridge, just gets closed down there as Ellis goes back round him. Morris not really exploding from the start line tonight and Ellis going round his teammate. That might not work and Etheridge comes through on the inside and the Swindon boys there both facing the same line there. On turn three and four, and that has sent Adam Ellis to the back. It's uh, Max Frick leading Nick Morris, and here goes Ellis with plenty of speed there into the top turn, trying to get back round the outside of Troy Etheridge. Etheridge drives mid track, Ellis in the deep stuff on the outside. Still them as they go around turns one and two for the third time and still Troy Etheridge maintains the third place here over Adam Ellis. The first two are set up front with Max Frick over Nick Morris. Etheridge now goes wide off then for Ellis. Temperley back from the inside. That's well worked out there by Adam Ellis. Turn back from the inside and pitch up third place back off Troy Etheridge. That'll be a learning curve for Etheridge. I think later in the season he might not make that mistake but they come around turns three and four for what should be a shared heat. It's a win again for Max Frick. He looks sensational. Second place Nick Morris and third place Adam Ellis. That was a bit harder than it might have been as far as Swindon were concerned. They were in second in second and third up on turns three and four, lap one. They both went for the same line and um, Adam Ellis went too wide, lost his place, but to be fair to him, regained it with a smart move there off the inside to get the better of Joy Etheridge and that will be a shared heat. But we've seen Steve Worrell go through the car from four rides and now Max Frick is unbeaten from three. He has nine points from his opening three rides tonight. It's a shared heat in race number 11 and it's Swindon 36, it's Bellevue 36, Swindon 30. So into the final four heats of this first leg, we've just had a, a short interval and 36-30 in Bellevue's favour. Damien Drodds and Dan Bewley for the Aces here in Heat 12 and Troy Batchelor and Zach Weichnecht for the Robins, 36-30. Second leg to come at the Abbey Stadium 
on uh, Thursday. It won't be a venue that uh, holds any fears as far as the Aces are concerned. They won at uh, Swindon last season, early in the campaign. Both sides have got a, uh, a decent enough record on each other's circuits. And uh, hard to read, of course, early in the campaign how things are going. I think most people do have Bellevue and Swindon up there in and around the, uh, the playoff mix again this year. We know that Poole are going to be strong. Uh, they're rather stung by what happened last year and have uh, completely rebuilt their side. The, the Dark Horse is really less desperate than a big rebuild over the winter. And they could be a real force in the league this season. Heat number 12 then at the start line. Green lights on and away they go. Back to game, three men to go start. Bunch is on the inside. They are going to draw so Bowie never made it either. And Swindon could be about to hit back big time here in heat 12. Troy Batcher made the start, and Vice Dukes improved as the meeting has gone on. And he's got the second here with Damien Trotz in third, and Bowie trying to wind up the outside run. But can Vice hold the Bellevue boys at bay? Damien Trotz trying the outside run. Dan Bowie on the inside, and they're really giving uh, giving uh, Vice a battle here into the third bend. They go. Batchel, where are in front? Trotz may have gone round Vice Dukes. There is a start lap three men second left. I think Damien Trotz has managed to spin the Swindon combination, although Vicek will try once again on the inside. And now can Bewley make it around the outside into match three and four for the third time? It's Bewley and Vicek wheel to wheel. Bachelor has the advantage. It's Trotz in second. Vicek is struggle there. And now Bewley is they starting off, and that might be enough to secure him third place. Damien Trotz fighting hard for the second to get round Zach Vicek. And I'm not sure Dan Bewley will manage to make it himself. It's going to be a win for Troy Bachelor. It's second for Damien Trotz, and Vicek will hang on for third there over Dan Bewley and Weisdeck very firmly shut the goal door there on Dan Bewley as they started lap four and that was enough to confirm third place for him. Damien Drodes working hard to come through into second round the outside. They couldn't catch Troy Batchelor who wins for the second time tonight and Swindon get that gap down to four points with three heats to go. Batchelor wins heat 12. Second place Damien Drodes, third Zach Weisdeck and it's Bellevue 38, Swindon 34. Well, this should be a crack up heat 13 with Craig Cook and Max Frick up against uh, Nick Morris and Tobias Mujanlak. The Robins have, uh, I think, worked their way into the meeting and now Yellow has been disqualified. Mujanlak is the latest to, uh, as the referee's got really eagle eyes, he's watching every ride up and Mujanlak has been disqualified. Again, arms are outstretched in the pits. Cannot get off the bike at the start line. Mujanlak's not happy with it. Tobias Mujanlak. So that's two Swindon riders who have now done it. We saw Max Frick earlier. And uh, I assume if it's, uh, if it's habit of riders, it's hard to get out of the habit, especially if you're allowed to do it in other countries. He'll go off the 15-metre handicap. And just like, uh, just like you can't ride over the uh, infield, uh, it's something they're going to have to learn. But it is something that, um, as I said earlier, it seems very petty. It's delaying the meeting, which is exactly what they were trying to avoid by bringing down the uh, the time between races. And all it's done is it's, it's caused a, a kerfuffle, people wondering what the heck's going on. And um, it will, as ever, it will take a few weeks to, to calm down and people will learn and, and they, won't, uh, they won't make the mistake. But really, it's uh, unfortunately, it's wrecked or it hasn't potentially wrecked what uh, what was looking like a really good race on paper because Mujana could won his last race and look quick. He got the outside gate. Morris is always going to be a threat. We know what Cook and Frick can do. And now we've got three on the start line and uh, one going 15 metres back. So, uh, again, it's probably it's the public who are, are suffering. That said, of course, Max Frick from 15 metres produced an absolute blockbuster in Heat 4. But uh, Mujana's going to find it hard there himself against riders of this calibre. Here we go with Heat 13 in a way. And uh, it's one of the there by Morris. Morris is now gated Frick and it's cut with the advantage. Morris in second place, Frick in third. We've seen Frick from the back earlier and he's taking high speed into events three and four, trying to get past Nick Morris. Craig Cook, his best gate so far of the meeting. He raised these from Nick Morris and Frick is that wide outside line. Morris is mid-tracking defensive on the inside. Now he still maintains for now. No, he doesn't. 
delivered round the outside by Max Frick in fantastic fashion. And Bellevue here have one and two. Uh, Morris trying to come back on the inside as they start the third lap. But Cook's got the advantage. Frick is actually faster than Cook here as they go. Round Bez one and two for the third time. Max Frick looks like he can put that bike anywhere he wants and it will do what he wanted to do. And he has second place with Craig Cook out in front. Morris in third. Lujanak at the back. And it looks like here Bellevue has Double their lead from four to eight as Cook leads on the back straight for the final time. Frick in second place, Morris in third, Mujanak on the handicap out the back. It's a big 5 1 to Bellevue in heat 13. It's Craig Cook and Max Frick over Nick Morris and Tobias Mujanak from 15 metres. And again, a demonstration of Max Frick's pace around the National Speedway Stadium. Nick Morris is certainly no slow coach, but uh, Max Frick went straight round him into Ben 3 on lap two to partner Craig Cook for his 5 1 there in heat 13. They're 5-1 in heat 13, and they double their lead. Tobias Mujelak is back at the pitch asking why he was disqualified. I know that the riders were given a briefing, certainly on the Swindon team, about that, but it is going to be an eight-point lead now for Bellevue. Craig Cook and Max Frick over Nick Morris and Tobias Mujelak, and it's Bellevue 43, Swindon 35. So Bellevue, eight points to the good. That's the uh, biggest margin they've had throughout the meeting. And I guess in any, any two-legged tie, if you're going for the aggregate win, which of course these two teams are, it's an uh, early season. It, uh, in the big context of the campaign, it doesn't, doesn't mean a massive amount, but uh, you'd be looking for a, a double-figure margin if you can. Well, I'm sure that um, the Aces will be confident going into Heat 15. They've got two uh, unbeaten riders, uh, potentially, if they uh, pick uh, Worrell and Frick for that one. So what can they get from a 14, or can they... Uh, Robin's hit back. Rowan Tungate off the uh, outside gate in red, yet to finish a race tonight. So it'll be interesting to see what, what bike is actually on there. It's uh, Johnny Etheridge going in blue, he's off gate two, and the Swindon pairings is Bellago going in white off the inside, and Davey in yellow and black off gate three. Davey's made a couple of good starts after missing out in heat two, and Bellago shared in an early 5 1 with Bachelor over Drods and Tungate in heat three. So a bit hard to call this one heat 14. I'm sure Tungate will be keen to uh, finish his night on a high by flying out the start here. 43.35 as we go into heat 14. And green light is on and away they go. Good start by Bellego. They're off the inside. Bellego has it over Etheridge. David trying to go around the outside. Turning back is Tungate. Bellego went too wide. Tungate almost got through past everyone. And meanwhile, the aces have uh, closed ranks over Mitchell Davey with Etheridge in third. Davey trying to come back inside him off the fourth bend. So leaving out here by Bellego. Second is Tungate. Etheridge in trouble there on turns one and two. Davy pegs the inside. Tungate has again got no pace really at all. And the aces are, well, level going into the third bend, but it's not too convincing. And it, if Davy keeps on pegging the inside here, he might nick a place. Certainly, Bellego has control. The aces riding shoulder to shoulder in second and third. But Mitchell Davy is right there. Etheridge picks up. Tungate goes back round him into the third bend. They're absolutely wheel to wheel here for second, third, and fourth. And now Mitchell Davy going for the outside, now looking for a comeback. Bellego and Miles there. Etheridge holding third, Mitchell Davy is right there but can't quite land the challenging blow and the Aces may survive here, Tungate looks over his shoulder, Tungate in trouble once again, Tungate comes to a stop and Swindon will get a 4-2, it's a win for Bellego, it's going to be second for Etheridge, third is Davy and Rowan Tungate is about to complete a full minimum and it might be a not a single finish, he might just roll over the finishing line there, he does. Last place, no points, a nightmare for Rowan Tongate, and it's a lucky 4-2 there for Swindon in heat 14. A clear win for David Bellago, Joy Etheridge a battling second, Mitchell Davy worked hard, he was always in the mix, and he got his reward there on the final lap when Tongate again lost power, and Davy comes through for third place. They got back to sixth with one hit to go, it's Bellevue 45, Swindon 39. So Bellevue have six points going into heat 14, six points of a lead. They'll be looking to make that double figures here in heat 15. They have their two unbeaten men on track. Steve Worrell in red off the inside. Hasn't ridden a call since heat 10. We've had an interval since then. So there has been quite a delay for Steve. He's off the inside in red. Max Frick goes in blue. Paid max so far, 11 
plus one and Swindon no surprise with their selections either Troy Batchelor is their highest scorer at nine paid ten from four rides he goes in white off gate two and David Belliger goes in uh, yellow and black off the outside fresh from winning heat 14 started and finished the meeting in good form at Belliger and uh, Swindon I think will be happy if they can uh, come away with anything other than a 5-1 Certainly if Bellevue get a 5-1 here, there'll be 10 points in front and uh, that might make them uh, slight favourites overall, but um, Swindon will, whatever happens here, Swindon will go into their home leg on Thursday. I think they have a chance of, uh, of turning it round. We've seen some, uh, some good competitive action. We've seen that uh, fantastic uh, heat four burst by Max Frick. Some other good passing from riders from both teams. And uh, as far as Bellevue are concerned, of course, the one thing they have to do is sort out the mechanical setup of, of Rowan Tungate because uh, clearly he's not being brought into this team to score zero from four rides. Do get strange how things happen early in the campaign. He 15, then last one of the meeting. Two unbeaten riders here for Bellevue. Away they go. Back to a better good start there from game two. And the red lights have come on. The red lights have come on from referee Stuart Wilson. We haven't had many of them tonight. In fact, that's our first one. We've had uh, disqualifications before the start line for the uh, green light but it will be a restart with all four and a warning to the rider in white Troy Batcher. we will still get warnings this year you may have read plenty over the winter about the fact that it was going to be anything goes at the start line that's not the case and Troy Batchelor has uh, clearly moved there before heat 15 and he has a warning from referee Stuart Wilson So round they come for the restart of heat 15. Troy Batchelor has received his warning from the start marshal, from the referee, or referee by the start marshal, whichever way you want to go about it. Steve Worrell off the inside in red. Troy Batchelor in white off gate two. Max Frick in blue off gate three. And uh, David Bellego goes in yellow and black off the outside. 45 to Bellevue, 39 to Swindon. And, uh, well, it's been a chilly evening. It's not been as, as perishingly cold as uh, was feared beforehand. And uh, certainly those who have uh, braved the elements this evening have, uh, will have uh, enjoyed their night out, I'm sure, because um, good to have Speedway back after five or six months. Uh, long winter, and it really has been a long winter this year with all the, uh, the dreadful weather. So good to have it back for the, uh, hopefully, a, a warm and exciting summer on the way. The riders taking their time to come into line for Heat 15, but thankfully everyone is staying aboard their bikes once they do the, uh, the gardening work, and they're coming to line now for the rerun of Heat 15. Worrell inside, Bachelor gate two, Frick gate three, Bellego outside, and for me, Bachelor may have made to again get there. This man is really got the bend in front. He has the advantage, Bellego tried the big burst around the outside, didn't quite work, he might try and switch back there on uh, Max Frick as they go into bed three and four, but Troy Bachelor, I think that looked like more of a flying start in this first one. He has the advantage here, on to lap two, but Steve Warren both again, better go and try to get a Max Frick, it's a really good battle here in 8.15, because Frick is pulling up massive speed there, on the inside goes Warren trying to pass Bachelor, and Bachelor is now going to be under all kinds of pressure from both Bellevue riders, Bachelor has it for Warren so far, halfway through the race, and Frick in third, and at the moment, Bachelor hopes here is going to take Swindon back to the Abbey with only a six point deficit ahead of Thursday. Batra has the advantage. It's a Frick going high round the outside in second. Morrill in third. Bellego was challenging hard there on the second lap. Don't think he'll make it. Will stop Troy Batchelor in E15 despite the run of Max Frick around the outside. Batchelor made a tremendous start. It was a very quick one indeed after the previous warning. A Batchelor wins E15 for Swindon. Troy Batchelor wins it. Second place is Max Frick. Third, Steve Morrill at the back, David Bellago. And Swindon, I think, will be happy enough with that. It's 48 42 from this first leg. Troy Batchelor warned for movement at the start at the first time of asking. And I have to say, that looked an even better start from him second time. He got clearly into the first bend in front and Steve Worrell and Max Frick both hoping to complete first night maximums could not do so in the end as Troy Batchelor gets his third win of the meeting and it's a six point win for Bellevue on opening night Batchelor with the win second place uh, Max Frick third Steve Worrell and it finishes the first leg Bellevue 48 Swindon 42 Well, even despite the referee's warning in heat number 15 to the rider in white, it was Troy Batchelor who emerged victorious, but being pursued keenly by Max Frick and Steve Roll meant the victory for Bellevue was ensured on the night. The final score, 48 points to 42. The best and only way to commence your season at home is with a home win. 
So for next week, we've got some more Premiership Supporters Cup action, this time against the Peterborough Panthers from the early 2019 season. That's coming up in the usual places at the usual time, Thursday, August the 20th on our official Facebook and YouTube channels at 8 o'clock sharp. We'll see you then.